Hey Bookworms, welcome back to my channel and to another review and if you hear purring in the background that's my cat who's really enjoying life at the moment. I'm not sure she's purring loud enough for it to be caught in the microphone but hey she purrs loud I can hear her. Anyway since uh, cats and books go well together and uh, yeah that's a good segue. Anyway today I'll be talking about Midnight at the Bright Ideas Bookstore by Matthew Sullivan. This is another book that I hold in my Christmas haul and I don't know I mentioned before I always had a, a thing about books that have the word book in the title or are about books or bookstores and such. Anyway, the moment I saw the title and I also looked at the back and realized that it involves a murder, I knew that this is just the book for me. The protagonist here is a young woman called Lydia and she works in a bookshop called uh, The Bright Idea Bookshop, which closes at midnight. I assume that's why the title is the title. And anyway, one of the regular customers one day kills himself, hangs himself in the middle of the store and she decides to try and find out why and apparently he left some clues for her to find and we also find out that his is not the first dead body that Lydia have ever seen. So pretty much as always let's start with the general what did I think about the book. Well every single free moment that I had I wanted to continue to read this book. It was the middle of the night, I was dead tired, my eyes were burning, but I still wanted to continue to read the book until I literally couldn't read it anymore. Yes, I absolutely love this book. I also wrote on Instagram. If you're not following me on Instagram, make sure you do. The link is down below. Anyway, I wrote there that I'm pretty sure that this is going to be one of those comfort books that I will end up rereading whenever I feel like rereading something I already read. Yeah, kind of like a comfort book, which is weird because there is a lot of murder and death and blood in this book. But you know, it's not like one of those uh, wannabe Scandinavian horror books that are filled with just tons of gore and uh, blood and are very overly serious. There's something kind of almost cozy about this book maybe because it sets in a pretty small town and revolves around uh, a very small group of people. I suppose that somewhere it kind of reminds me of whodunits that are usually very kind of confined and this is a subgenre of detective book that I really really like. Also it's not that much about deaths and murder or suicide because as I said the guy kills himself. It's more about the psychological ramification of the living people, the survivors of people who saw dead bodies or have lost uh, in various ways uh, people that they knew and loved. Another thing that I really loved was the pacing. The pacing in this book was absolutely perfect. You get a lot of flashbacks into Lydia's past and you would think that a book dealing with an investigation of someone's death will be boring whenever you go from investigation to something else, but it wasn't. Every single moment here was was interesting and you get something, you get some information about either Lydia's past or why people did such thing or you know actual clues. I was never felt as if I was taken out of the interesting part. There was not a dull moment in this book. And if you think that it's simply because it's an investigation into somebody's suicide instead of a murder and therefore it shouldn't be so interesting or suspenseful, think again. Now as you can imagine I don't have a lot of bad things to say about this book. Uh, actually I don't really have any negatives. However there is this one thing that kind of, I don't know, bothered me a little bit and it's just that some of the things some characters do or say were kind of unrealistic. There were numerous moments where I would think okay that would never have happened like that in real life. It's like the book tried to be a little bit of a Hollywood movie and not something realistic. Here is a little example. So Lydia is at work in the bookshop and somebody calls her. Another question, how does he call her? Like does she carry her cell phone with her in the shop? Whatever. Anyway somebody calls her and say you have to come here quick and get a car and she does like that that would never happen like that outside of a Hollywood movie like first of all you can just leave your job just like that especially in retail unless it's an emergency and your boss is very gen generous and get a car she doesn't have one she just asks one of her colleagues uh, I need your car and she gives it to her 
and like the way of saying like come here quick like nobody really said okay sure I will get there you would ask okay why where you have to wait till I finish my shift you know things like that would just you know really felt like the book trying to be a Hollywood movie instead of something um, that would happen in real life and since I'm here once again it's not a bad thing it's just something that I kept thinking about as I was reading kind of like maybe bothering the OCD that's uh, in the back of my mind I constantly felt like English was not the first language of the author even though I looked it up he's from Denver which is uh, by the way where the book takes place but it's just that every now and then it seems like the words that he uses uh, weren't like the right words for the situation like I suppose they are grammatically correct but like with the previous uh, thing I said it's like people don't really use them in real life I mean for example the protagonist kept calling her colleagues comrades always so as a person who is not native uh, English speaker and didn't grow up in an English speaking country if you are, I mean, is that a thing to call your colleagues comrades all the time? Is that a Colorado thing? Is that an American thing? I mean, just is it just weird or what is it? And once again, it's not really a flaw. It's just something strange that, you know, as you read a book, you keep asking yourself, okay, why is she calling her colleagues comrades? And why is she using these words instead of other? But I don't know, it's not really a bad thing about the book. So to conclude, this book is great. Uh, I mean, I have this feeling like not every person will have the same reaction that I had toward this book and not everyone will be absolutely crazy about it as much as I was. But if you like cozy whodunits, you know, not the really vast big city ones, but more of the more concise, condensed uh, with fewer characters, I think you love it. If you like books that deal with more the trauma of seeing dead bodies and like witnessing a death more than simply the gore in the death you will like it if you like personal stories about someone trying um, to catch the demons that are haunting him from the past you will like it and if you just like kind of like cozy not super serious but interesting uh, detective style books that like a regular person investigate instead of a police officer you know what I mean um, then yeah that I think you will like this book anyway I do just generally recommend at least giving this book a chance it's a really I don't know cozy in a way it's cute it's like not one of those very very overly dramatic and overly serious ones so yeah, that's what I have to say about this book and that's all for my review. I really hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching it. If you did like it, please don't forget to subscribe, like and share to the world this lovely video on this lovely channel. Anyway, check out also the description box below. There will be other videos there that I thought you guys might like and comment down below on your favorite kind of cozy book, the one that you keep uh, still on your bookshelf even though you probably read it a million times you probably remember it by heart and every time you fling down or you just want to reread something you read this one and to share mine are probably Making History by Stephen Fry and Good Omens by Neil Gaiman and Terry Pratchett which are totally different from this book but still they are my comfort book Oh, and The Mysteries of Pittsburgh by Michael Shaven. Okay, three are enough, right? Anyway, comment down below on yours. Thank you very much for watching once again, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.